once again coming to you live from the capital city of the great state of Texas, overlooking downtown Austin and the University of Texas. Uh, in the distance, we are a product of the Republic of Football on Dave Campbell's Texas Football Podcast Network. We're powered by Grande Equipment. Welcome to the show that knows the pride and tradition of the Texas football program will never be entrusted to the timid or the weak. This is the Eyes on Texas podcast. I'm Aaron Hogan, morning show host at the Horn, the Longhorn flagship station here in Austin every morning, weekdays, 6 to 10 at hornfm.com. And he is back, I assume refreshed, and uh, after his unplugged trip into the mountains, the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, the senior writer at Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, the mountain man himself, uh, he is Mike Craven. How are you, Mr. Craven? Doing pretty good. <clears throat> Got back just in time for some people to start getting their magazines and to start complaining to me about how I predicted their team would finish. So we're right on cue <laughs> right on and cue. Uh, ready to go into the summer. That's good. You, How many words did you say you wrote for the uh, 2023 edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine? A little under 35,000. So you're not going to make everybody happy. I am not going to make everybody happy. <laughs> I am not going to make everybody happy. I don't make myself happy, right? Like By the time you turn it in, you don't like any of it. You know, like you're second guessing yourself already. So I totally get why people would second guess. Well, that's guess why me. I did a, a, a an internship in journalism at the uh, when I was at St. Edwards way back. Went to the Austin American Statesman, did an internship, mm. did some writing, wrote for the school paper, and that's what I didn't like. That it was permanent. People would yeah, always yeah. go back and find it. Yeah. I guess they go back and find shows we do in the morning, but it almost seems more fleeting yeah. when you just say something dumb and then it's gone. Like, we're going to archive all of these at a website that we're building right now for Eyes on Texas and the, the multicast. But, you know, they got to go back and find it. They can't just send it to you. Like, on a for, for example, uh, we put Sonny Dykes on the cover. And when we went into Sonny Dykes' office to kind of start shooting the shots, behind his desk is a picture, framed picture of him holding up the Fiesta Bowl trophy. And it is sitting on top of four or five old Dave Campbell's Texas football magazines, including last year's. Where I historically picked TCU to go seven and five. <laughs> well, most people yeah. did. So I don't think Sonny Dykes was mad about that. No, no, but he he told me about it. You know, he let me know about it. you know, and so it does live kind of forever there in like a way that is not fun sometimes. And you know what? That's your and, and our on uh, on air predicting is what makes a season like they had last year magical. Mm -hmm. Like without the naysayers, there's no magic to it. It was the expected. Uh, which is what's going to be fun for the Longhorns this year. There's a lot of expectation. Everybody's expecting the Longhorns to win every game, and uh, maybe not the Alabama game. And that'll be part of our multicast tonight. It is episode 10. We're excited to hit double digits now. And I uh, want to remind you that our multicast uh, that keeps you on top of all things Texas football is powered by Grande Equipment. We are a product of the Republic of Football on Dave Campbell's Texas Football Network, so you can find us there. We're on the YouTube page at The Horn, YouTube page at Dave Campbell's Texas Football, uh, also on Spotify and iTunes as we drop it every week here through the summertime. Uh, once we get to the football season, we've been telling you we will end up uh, doing two episodes a week, one on a, on a, uh, at the beginning of the week that'll drop, and then we'll do a, an updated Thursday that'll drop on a Friday ahead of each game for the Longhorns this season, which we're excited about. And speaking of those games, we'll talk about the Longhorns schedule in 2023 and in 2024, which was released last week while Mike was in the Smoky Mountains. I want to get an update. How was uh, how was the hiking? How was the cooler temperatures? It was nice. Or were the cooler temperatures? It was nice. I have tendonitis in my knee, and yes. so i got to wear the, wear the knee brace on the way down. People think going up is the hardest part. It's going down. That really is bad for your knees because of all the weight and the gravity. But I got to uh, hike some of the Appalachian Trail. Um, and really, I just missed the weather. Like When we landed... Just getting off the plane back in Austin, it was like, oh, man, it is it's a different kind of heat. Because you get in those mountains, you wake up, it's like 64, you put on a you know a hoodie and some shorts, and it's it's about perfect weather. Then you get back to Austin, and it feels like 104 at 930 at night. So uh, the weather I miss, uh, but it's always good to be back in the great state. Yeah, we're working on Maybe this multicast will grow into something enough to where you and I can summer in a cooler mm -hmm. place, like yeah. June and July. Just yes. You know, May's fine. I can do through May. Oh, yeah. Labor Day or yeah. Memorial Day to Labor Day or even to Memorial Day to when football season starts, like uh, Big 12 football media days in July. Just six weeks. This is how people get talked into timeshares. Yeah, well, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Uh, we're going to do something smarter than that. We'll have a rental property or some kind. We'll figure it out, but we're working on that now. But uh, we, to that end, to make this thing grow, we hint, wouldn't, couldn't do it without our partners. As we break our multicast into four quarters every week, we'll get into our four quarters coming up. First quarter will be all about the Texas schedule 2023. Uh, then we'll get into the uh, deep dive on the Texas football 2024 SEC schedule that was released. So now we know the entirety, not dates and times, but the games and who the Longhorns will play and where. 
for 2024. That'll be good debates. Uh, we'll hit our halftime segment, revisit some of our conversation with Quan Cosby last week that we had, which was great while Mike was uh, hiking. Uh, also, quarter three will be our, of course, spicy takes in college football, and we'll finish it up with our final four in our fourth quarter. But let me tell you about our friends at Grande Equipment. They do power our, uh, our, our multicast. They are our title sponsor. That's my great friend Wes Murray and Weston, his son, they're a tremendous team that understands that your reputation is all you have. When you have a project and need equipment to get that done, all that matters is getting it done and getting it done on time uh, without with hassle-free. And that's why Grande partners with you. Once you they're in your business, they're going to provide your equipment. Uh, it is going to be on time. It's going to be their job site ready every single time. They've operated that way for 31 years. That's how they've grown from a small little company to one that you know, can, does international business and competes in the big leagues. But they're sp- still small, independent, and nimble. And uh, they're not in the equipment business, as Wes always tells me. They're in the partnership and friendship business, relationship business. That's how they operate. Uh, and, again, it's an independent equipment dealer from all major manufacturers like Caterpillar, John Deal, Komatsu, Volvo, and many more. Uh, they're not locked in to one brand name. They get you what you need. Job site ready and ready to go. They also have a great new solar initiative as well. Uh, renewable sector, just doing great work. They're great people. They're great Longhorn fans. They wanted to be a part of this multicast. Can't thank them enough. It's Grande Equipment, uh, online at grandeequipment.com, based now in New Braunfels, Texas. Awesome people. Remember, Grande doesn't overpromise, they over deliver. Also, want to let you know that. Uh, uh, the multicast is also brought to you by our founding partners, which we'll tell you about tonight. I couldn't do it without them. That would be One Source Gas, uh, your one-stop shop to Central Texas gas products and all needs there. Uh, access discount health care as well. The Good Times and Incredible Scratch Comfort Food at Hayes City Store and Ice House. An absolute absolute destination location in Driftwood, Texas that I like to frequent. On Point Spices and our good buddy Carlos Carrion, the Texas Mortgage Guy at TexasMortgageGuy.com. All of our founding partners, and as I say, those are our founding partners. We're not adding more. This is it. We're growing with them. They're growing with us. Uh, these are our people, and uh, we're going to support them. Hopefully, you'll support them as well as you get to know them more and learn from them. Uh, they're the ones to go to for any of these needs we're talking about. Uh, but that's it. We're not adding more as we go. That's it for us. Uh, well, let's dive into the first quarter. Uh, we do four quarters here, just like a football game. And we're going to focus our attention on the Longhorn schedule. I think a lot was given to last week, which, of course, the SEC did the NFL-style Roll out the schedule, keep yourselves relevant, put yourselves in the news, which I don't criticize at all, Mike. But people are, I, I thought it was, it was somewhat poignant that, and smart that, that Steve Sarkeesian and a lot of the Longhorn football players and their staff put out the 2023 schedule while the 2024 schedule was being revealed, saying, hey, we got an important 2023 season to play. We're not focused on 2024. Y'all can be. Talk about it all you want. We're looking forward to September 2nd. Well, you look at you go up and down the starting roster of this football team, and a lot of them won't be here for that 2024 season anyway. You yeah. know, so for <laughs> for an Xavier Worthy, for a Jalen Ford, uh, even for maybe a Quinn Ewers, right? I mean, 2023 is is where the money's going to get made, and so uh, I think it's fun for us in the media, fun for us in the fans to kind of look ahead to 2024. Uh, but those guys on this Texas team are are looking to 2023 and to win the Big 12, and and for a lot of them to ride off into the sunset. Yeah, uh, and with a championship potentially, mm-hmm. as we've glossed it on the morning show at HornFM.com, the all gas no excuses season. Uh, there are no excuses. Uh, it's a schedule that's manageable. The roster is stacked. Uh, but here's what we'll do: have some fun with it. We will dive into the 2024 schedule coming up. Have some fun with that as well. We will certainly not ignore that on this multicast. I promise you. Uh, but we thought it would be fun to rank. The Longhorn 12 game schedule for 2023, which as the recording as of this recording on a Monday night, June 19th, it is 75 days to the season opener for the Longhorn. So 75 days out. What are the toughest games all the way to the easiest games? And as Mike knows, writing it down might be wrong on some of these, but we're <laughs> going to put them out there. Yeah. I also thought it might be re- be fun to revisit this segment after we go to Big 12 Media Days and get to talk to the coaches yeah. uh, about a month from now and and might kind of hear where they're at. But, uh, Mike, what is your easiest game of the 12 for the Longhorns? How did you – because we did this independently. Uh, we didn't uh, talk and, co- and, you know, coalesce on this. We just talked – but did our own, so there could be some differences here. Of the 12 games, which one do you think is the most winnable? Now, it feels like Wyoming. Uh, you know, maybe I'm too close to the weeds there on Rice, but but give me Wyoming, not a very good football team, you know, at home for Texas, coming off that Alabama win where they're either going to need a bounce-back win um, or they're going to be riding high from an upset win over Alabama. So I think Wyoming is, is the easiest. That's interesting because that's the third game. Wyoming comes after the trip to Tuscaloosa, which I think we'll have pretty high on this list mm-hmm. of easiest to toughest. I took Rice. I took Rice just because it is a home game. It starts the season, that whole – 
you know, we're going to fumble a kickoff or we're going to muck, muck, muck things up. Uh, and Rice does have a better offense than uh, I think we've, you know, Mike Bloomgren, probably his best team that he's had. JT Daniels, an experienced quarterback, but plenty of deficiencies, certainly on defense. Uh, and the heat of, uh, of a Labor Day weekend, I think, is just going to overwhelm that group. Uh, it could be Rice, could be uh, Wyoming. I think those are both coin flips. Have no argument with yours. Uh, again, and you added something to the equation I hadn't thought about. Coming off the Alabama game, you're going to be either riding an amazing wave or, you know, disappointing like last year. Both of those are, you know, have to win them, have to win them by, you know, multiple scores and get a lot of people in the game. Both home games, uh, both real opportunities. But real quick while we're on it, we don't know a ton about Wyoming. We'll learn more as we go. Uh, but Rice, you have talked to Mike Bloombrin. You just reset your thoughts on the Owls and where they are with JT Daniels on his fourth team, I believe. Yeah, so you know they've known each other forever. Mike Bloomgren was the offensive coordinator at Stanford when JT Daniels was a hot shot, five star prospect quarterback coming out of California. And so uh, Mike Bloomgren offered him, I think it was his first ever offer when he was like eighth or ninth grade. And so Bloomgren jokes he's been trying to get him, you know, for eight years now <laughs> and was finally able to get him to Rice. And they're going to have a really good offense. Luke McCaffrey, uh, Br- Bradley Rosner has been there forever as a wide receiver. Uh, they're going to be able to throw the ball around. They're always going to be able to run the ball at Rice, maybe not against Texas, but in against their level of competition, they'll be able to run the football. The question marks are on the defensive side of the football. You know, they have a decent pass rusher in Josh Piercy. Uh, they have some talented defensive backs in Sean Fresh, for example, who played at Austin LBJ. Um, and so, you know, they have some talent, uh, but they're going to be overwhelmed against Texas for sure. Yeah, and that's week one. That's 75 days from the recording of this episode. Uh, it's September 2nd, Labor Day weekend. Uh, and of course, in Wyoming is week three. should say that Oscar Giles will make his return to Austin in that game. He is uh, coaching a, what they think is a decent defensive line at Wyoming. Uh, they also have are ranked number 13. Uh, in returning production, according to the ESPN SP Plus metric, which you know they got some guys back, uh, but it is Wyoming. Speaking of teams, they're going to melt in the heat of Texas. It'll still be hot in September, uh, September the sixteenth. Uh, that'll be warm coming out of uh, Laramie, Wyoming. So those are your first two of the three. Got to have the wins. What about your tenth game? This is where it gets interesting. Uh, this is where you get into conference play. Now, obviously, the Alabama game. We'll get to the probably near the top, uh, maybe at the top, uh, foreshadowing. But uh, who do you have at ten? I have at Iowa State. I just I'm not a Matt Campbell person. I don't believe in all the hype that he gets and the five star culture and all that kind of stuff. I think Iowa State's going to be pretty bad. Uh, so at Iowa State feels like a very easy, winnable game for Texas. Yeah, this is where it gets a little bit difficult. I have Houston. The trip down to Houston. I think there is a. I've listened to you enough preaching the Dave Campbell's thoughts on where Mike Mike uh, or Dana Holgerson is right now with this program. I don't think they're ready for this, and I think uh, between that, I, I had to pick between the, the Iowa State game as you mentioned, but you know Kansas has improved. Houston uh, is a road game. It's going to be at a what forty three thousand seat stadium there. They're not going to play that at NRG. I know when it, would, when it was announced that Texas was going to drop in Oklahoma State and add a Houston, there was thought it could be moved to NRG, but they're not giving up that home field. Yeah, they want it on campus. And they've sold out season tickets at yep. U of H. Well, that game's a big part of it. They want to make it as hostile as, as, as possible. I just, I'm just i not buying. I mean, Clayton Toon was such a good quarterback for them for a long time. Tank Dell, the receivers now playing for the Houston Texans. I think they lost their best players, and I'm not sure they re- replaced them. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying on paper. I don't think Houston's going to be. I think the the over and under has been like four and a half. Like I think Houston's going to be pretty bad. They're going to struggle to make a bowl game. However, that's going to be their Super Bowl. Yeah. Like if they're going to play a big game and they're going to play well and pull out all the stops and have a home field advantage, which they don't normally have, it's going to be that game. Uh, and so that's why I kind of have them a little bit higher up the list, just because of how big that will be for the program. Well, let's also see if I had the schedule correct. The Longhorns play Oklahoma. Then it's a bye week, and then it's Houston. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Is that where we're going with yeah. that? So I, it's also off a of bye. That's another that's reason true. I put it there, that the Longhorns will have played that Oklahoma game. I think that's a very uh, under-talked-about part of the schedule. That, that that week after the Oklahoma game for both teams, Texas and Oklahoma, always one of those. Whether you win or to lose it, uh, it's it's a momentum game. Houston, you get you know they're going to get Texas on, on a fresh week off uh, in Houston. It'll be their Super Bowl, but also be a big game for for. Steve Sarkeesian and his staff to play a game in the city of Houston, uh, coming off a game in the city of Dallas uh, for showcase. So I, I'm going to put that as the tenth easiest game. Nine, Mike. I have Kansas. I have the Kansas Jayhawks because it's uh, it, it's here. It's in the in the Longhorn Stadium. It's late September, so still will be a warm game. Uh, I just I know Kansas was improved, and I know early in the season Lance Leipold will probably have more, and Jalen Daniels is back. I just feel like. 
the Longhorns' talent will over. I mean, the 55-14 game from a year ago is just in my head that it was just men versus boys. It was varsity versus junior varsity. I think the Longhorns are better this year. I just don't think that changes that much. I actually have BYU next up. Oh, wow. Uh, And the reason I have Kansas a little bit higher up the board, or just really one spot higher up the board over BYU, is it's that week before the Oklahoma game. And that one can get tough for for Texas and and Oklahoma is because you're looking ahead. You know how big that Red River rivalry game is going to be. You know, I think Kansas sandwiched between a road game against Baylor and then, you know, the Oklahoma game could get tricky. Uh, But BYU, they've lost a lot of guys. I know they're always going to be tough up front. They're going to be developed offensive line. They're going to be developed in the defensive line because, you know, they're average age. Is a lot older, uh, but I think Texas just matches up physically in a way that that they're going to do what BYU can do better. And there's no way BYU has the athletes to hang with Texas. Yeah, agreed. That game is late October as well. I have that eight uh, just ahead of the kid. That was the, the, that little eight, nine, ten Houston mm-hmm. BYU. Yep. Um, it's almost in tears. Yeah, the Kansas, Kansas BYU. Kansas. Houston, that's yeah, all you got to pick it. I like your your theory with uh, the ahead of the Oklahoma game. That's sometimes can be the look ahead game versus coming off the Oklahoma game when the Longhorns have the week off. Uh, I put BYU at eight with the Kansas game at nine. But uh, one note about BYU. They added Keaton Slovis through the portal. I mean, yep. much like JT Daniels, how many team programs will he play for? Uh, he's bounced around. They may have the top offensive lineman in the conference and Kingsley uh, Suamataya. Uh, big dude, because they always have big guys, right? As you said, the age. <laughs> and BYU will come in here with some older guys that are 23, 24 years old. Uh, but the athletes will be a problem. That is October 28th. I have that at 8. You have it at uh, at 9. Uh, and then at 8, you have – where are we at with your, your rankings? Are you at 8? No, we're not. We're not at 7 now, I think. Okay. So with we, Baylor? Yeah, you're. we're both Baylor at 7. Yep, Baylor at 7. At Baylor at 7. Yeah, because I have Baylor uh, at Waco, the seventh toughest game on the Longhorn 2023 schedule. You also have it. Um, you know, Richard Reese at running back will be a sophomore, good player. And something you point out, I, you know, I was a victim or guilty of this too. It's almost like when you talk about Baylor and, and their disappointing season a year ago, everybody points at Blake Shapin and quarterback. You immediately go to defense. That the Dave Aranda is built on defense as a program, and the defense was a problem. They won the Big 12 championship the year previous because of the defense. Yeah, I mean, you go look at the scores of the Sugar Bowl, the Big 12 championship game, of those down the stretch, and they never scored over 30, and they were still winning all those football games. Last year, they weren't winning those football games because they were giving up a lot of points. They leaned on the transfer portal more this cycle. I think they brought in um, some really good players on the defense. They're going to be better out wide. I think there's a clear deviation here, right? Like between what we're about Baylor and the rest of these guys that we're about to talk about and then Houston, Kansas, BYU down. Like I think this is where the ceiling I think I think Baylor's a really good team. So you team. think I'm underrating Houston? No, no, no. I'm saying that the line like the there's two schedules. There's Houston, Kansas, BYU, Iowa State, Wyoming and Rice, and then there's Baylor and up. Yeah. I think Baylor's kind of that right in between of like really good teams in the Big 12 that could start pushing Texas. I don't think any of the other teams we've mentioned so far can really push Texas. I think Baylor's the first team uh, that we're talking about today that can really push Texas because they have some athletes. Okay, and I agree with you. And and Baylor, it's their Super Bowl too. Texas on their way out of the Big 12. Everyone yeah. wants to give them one more last loss. trip to Waco. A last trip to Waco. Dave Aranda is just a good football coach. I have that at seven. But I, and this is one I probably regret putting on paper here on my iPad because I have Iowa State at six, but I listen to you talk about Iowa State. But they do have Hunter Deckers back. I think Matt Campbell is a better coach than you do think he is. Uh, I'm a believer there. I like him. And Hunter Deckers started every game last year for them, and he'll be back. So returning quarterback. And, and Ames is just a just a weird trip. Just yeah. it's, it's hard to get up for, but they're up for it. One of those kind of deals. We don't know a time on that game yet, but it's uh, – I've been to a Thursday night game there when Tom Herman was the coach. Went on a trip to that game, and it's just it's it's a great place. People are friendly. It's almost like going to a Nebraska game. People are super nice, but they're into it. It's huge, and Texas is there. And you know, does Texas get up for it? It's November the eighteenth. It's late in the year. There's going to be a lot to play for. Could be could be weather. Could be a you know the you know Ames, Iowa, November eighteenth. You know who knows what you're going to deal with. Could be rain. Could be some snow. Could be cold and windy. Uh, so I put that as the sixth toughest game. Who do you have at six, Mike? I have Texas Tech. Uh, you know, Ooh, I have them higher. So, uh, you know, like the last game of the year, it's at home. Uh, you know, Tech beat Texas last year in overtime, and that famous Joey McGuire. Like I told you that they were going to quit, and that's exactly what they, they that they did. You know, I think for Texas, they're going to be playing for a Big Twelve championship game, or at least a berth into that. You know, maybe even bigger if they beat Alabama, if they beat Oklahoma. Um, and so I, I think that's going to be a big game for Texas. I think with the revenge factor, last time they played Texas Tech, I, I think I think 
Tech is right there. Well, I'm going to show my hand here because I know you're a poker player. I have Texas Tech as the third toughest game. I think because of everything you just said, I'm a, a Joey McGuire believer. I think he, he creates that. And uh, I think that's the last game of the year for Tech. It's the last regular season game of the year for Texas. I think everybody's going to be eyeing that. And I just I like the older veteran team, Tyler Shuck at quarterback. And if he gets hurt, I think they've got some depth in the quarterback room. Uh, and they've got the probably the best returning running back in the conference coming back. Uh, so I think Tech, for me, is third. My number uh, six is, is or number five. We had five or six? Five, I think. All right, five. My number five is TCU at TCU. Mm-hmm. So I have five TCU there. Uh, you know, Sonny Dykes replaces a ton. He's the cover cover person on Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. But he, he replaces every significant player at every position. The best player at every position on his team, including quarterback, running back, Kundra Miller's gone, Quentin Johnston, all the receivers – so much. I mean, the Steve Avila up front. So much production on defense as well. And I mean, maybe the, the I know they bring in a Bryles, but the the Garrett Riley loss on offensive coordinator I think is a factor here. So I think that becomes an easier team. It is at TCU. It's mid you know early early mid November November 11th at TCU. I put that slightly ahead of the the next couple coming. I have TCU at five for me. Yeah, I have TCU at four. Okay. Um, you know, add four. And I and I, I think, again, I think these are tiers, right? I think the Kansas State, TCU, Texas Tech, Baylor, those are all, you know, kind of in the same grouping for me. Uh, I'm going to go at Fort Worth just because it's on the road. Uh, TCU is going to have a little bit of time to kind of grow into their team by the time they play Texas. And Sonny Dykes is 3-0 and against Texas as a head coach. Yep. Uh, dating back to his Cal days. That's uh, correct. You know, he's he knows how to play against Texas. He likes to play against Texas. It's a big big game for him. He grew up when he was in high school or middle school. He grew up in Austin while his, while his dad was an assistant coach here. So it's a big game for him. He felt like he got passed up for this job, right? So, you know, there's that part of it as well. I got TCU at 4. TCU 4. My number 4 is Oklahoma. Uh, I, I am not as big on the comeback for OU yet. Do, you know, Brett Venables is a defensive-minded coach in an offensive-minded league, and I know the defense have improved in the Big 12, but you still got to play offense. I know Dylan Gabriel's there. I just there's kind of a fractured fan base going on right now that you know Lincoln Riley. They, they tried to pretend like it wasn't a big deal that he was leaving and taking so many good coaches and, and you know, Caleb Williams uh, because they've had so much success from Bob Stoops right into Lincoln Riley. I, I, you know, it's the fourth toughest game in my mind, but it's neutral. It's uh, both teams off to the SEC and trying to prepare for that. Uh, I, I, I like, and, and if something happens to Dylan Gabriel, who's been an often injured quarterback, they turn to a freshman, true freshman in Jackson Arnold. Uh, for Jeff Levy on the offensive side, uh, I'm just not sold on Oklahoma. I, they remind me of Texas in the years when they're trying to replace a quarter or coach on the fly, where they think it's going to be fine, they're expecting to win, but their lines of scrimmage aren't great, their depth isn't great, and Brett Venables hasn't proven to me that you know, he's ready to be a head coach at that level in the Big 12. So I have Oklahoma at number four. Yeah, I uh, was born in 85. I kind of came of age in the 90s, early, you know, aughts. And so I have PTSD. Oklahoma will always be higher on that list, <laughs> yeah. you know, for me. And so I think they're number two. I have Kansas State at, at number three, um, right above right above uh, uh, Oklahoma at two. Uh, Kansas State returns a lot of players. Uh, I think they're going to be as good, if not better, at, at quarterback. And so they're going to have to replace Deuce Vaughn. Uh, but Chris Kleiman, to me, for my money, is the best coach in the Big 12, the most consistent coach in the Big 12. Uh, and somebody that you know is going to play some football, right? They're not going to lose many games on their own. They're going to make you go win that football game. Uh, I'll take Kansas State at number three and then OU at two. Okay. And I have the Kansas State game uh, as number two, uh, the toughest conference game. Um, you know, Longhorns were able to win there last year. And is my date right here? That game is in Manhattan this year or is it in Austin? It's in Austin, okay. November 4th, right November after BYU. 4th here. I'm going to put that as number one just because they are the defending champs. Their offensive line and lines of scrimmage are back. Uh, Will Howard is a just came on like a like a house of fire uh, last year at quarterback. I think that continues in the same system, and I I think in year one, uh, the new offensive coordinator Colin Klein Colin Klein, the former quarterback, played big paid big big dividends. I thought he was good for them. I think they're going to be good on the line of scrimmage. So I'm going to put Kansas as the toughest Big Twelve game for the Longhorns, even though it's a home game, which is tough because I got Texas Tech at three, I've got Oklahoma at four. I think kind of like the back end of the schedule, these could be coin flips. But uh, I, I'm with you. I think Chris Kleiman is the most proven winning coach in the Big Twelve Conference, and 
he's going to have a team that's going to be playing for something when they come here in early November. Yeah, I mean, their floor just seems very high, right? Like, they're just not a team that's going to lay over. They're not going to fade. Um, they're going to show up, and they're going to be in your face. And that, and if there's going to be a team that challenges Texas, that's what I think it's going to take to beat Texas. Like, there's not – Oklahoma, Alabama are probably the only two teams on the schedule that can go man for man, talent for talent, you know, with the first 40 on the roster. Uh, where Kansas State can win is just through culture and toughness and togetherness and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so that's a tough game for them for sure. I, I think Kansas State, what what may I think Oklahoma, their schedule is so easy. Yeah. Like if you go and you look at Oklahoma's schedule, its schedule is so easy. It just feels like that Texas game is the only thing between them and a Big Twelve title appearance. Don't disagree. Uh, again, I I so for the Big Twelve, I have Kansas State. The, as the toughest. I've got Texas Tech three because I think it's going to mean a lot at the end of the year. I think Tech will be a good team. I have uh, Oklahoma four, TCU and Fort Worth five, Iowa State, Baylor, BYU, a new newcomer, Kansas, Houston as as your toughest uh, in that order. You have them. Yeah, I have uh, a toughest. I got Alabama, then Oklahoma, Kansas State, TCU, Texas Tech, and then Baylor. Okay. All right, put Kansas State ahead. Well, give me your thoughts on Alabama. Uh, obviously, the reigning Big 12 champions. Excuse me, the reigning, uh, you know, I was just reading that from uh, uh, K-State. But give me your Alabama thoughts. Nick Saban, here's the number that needs to know that, that this stands out. Because then a lot of Texas fans are getting fired up. They can win that game. They can find a way. They almost won it here. Nick Saban has lost one non-conference game as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. One time. And that was to Louisiana Monroe. <laughs> way back at the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't lose yeah, he in said September. Never again. Uh said never again. It's at Bryant Denny Stadium. Longhorns have not played there in over a hundred years. What is what your percentage guy? You like to gamble. What are the odds you would put on Texas being able to win that football game? I think it's less because of how well they played them last year, right? I mean, maybe that's just like weird logic, but you know, they're not I think last year Alabama underestimated what Texas was. Yeah. They came in here and by the time they figured out how oh, hey, that's a pretty good football team, it was it was late in the game, the crowd was fired up, and everything went Texas way there until the end. I think Alabama's gonna be ready to play that football game. They're gonna be trying to show Texas that they're not SEC ready. It's gonna probably be at you know, like it's gonna be an obviously a, a big time atmosphere with probably ESPN game day there and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, to me I think it's gonna be and you know, Nick Saban usually can't play this card. But all off season long, he can go like they don't believe in us. Georgia is the big dog now. We're you know like we lost we lost this guy Bryce Young. We lost this guy. We lost that. I think Alabama is going to be ready to play and ready to make a statement. I think it's going to be a tough tough game for Texas. But they have the talent to do it. There's nobody on this schedule that ta- Texas can't play with at their very best. It's just a matter of if they can do that on the road in a big time atmosphere. All gas, no excuses. And yes, Alabama does replace both coordinators, quarterback who was the best quarterback in the country two years ago. was pretty damn good last year. Uh, Remember, Alabama, I know people think they're coming off a down year. They lost two games on the last play of the game, on the road. Those were their losses. They lost at Tennessee. They lost at LSU. Last play of the game, they won every other game. But because of those two losses, both in the SEC West or SEC, they didn't even play in the big in the SEC title game. So seems like a down year, but not that far. Uh, And again, Nick Saban has lost one non-conference game at Alabama. Uh, that's scary good. Our first quarter, that's going to close us down. Brought to you by our man Carlos Carrion, the Texas Mortgage Guy, online at thetexasmortgageguy.com. You know, it's time for a new mortgage. It's a huge decision for you and your family, whether it's a new one or a refi. Longhorn fans should be working with Longhorn fans. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, especially with someone like Carlos, who's an expert in the field. Just makes sense. Works better. People that are like-minded like you, you can talk football and he's going to take care of you. Knows the business, the lay of the land. He's a lifelong Austinite, so knows the market back and forth. He's a diehard Longhorn fan who would have gone to UT, but is a good baseball player. So he went to St. Edwards. Couldn't play for Coach uh, Garrido there. Uh, but uh, here he is uh, going on in a decade in the industry. Not here to just provide you with a quote. He's your guide to help solve problems, strategize. You know, it's just ask some questions and say, where are we at? When might be a good time? I do want to refi this thing. When do things come back? Just uh, let Carlos be your guy. Lean on him for uh, the big decisions in your life. Great communicator. Great response times. It's Carlos Carrion. Hey, I have a phone number here, but just go to the website, thetexasmortgageguy.com. You're not going to remember the number. The TexasMortgageGuy.com. Don't forget the the. Might get lost somewhere else. The TexasMortgageGuy.com. Carlos Carrion bringing you our first quarter. All right, second quarter time. We got to move on. That was a good 30-minute first quarter. We had some penalties and 
reviews and a lot going on. But uh, Access Discount Healthcare, created by pharmacists, to offer you Netflix style monthly subscriptions to help significantly cut your prescription drug costs. They're a great sponsor of our second quarter. So let's dive in quick, Mike, with the SEC. They went all in NFL style, announced and released their 2024 football schedule, which will include Texas and Oklahoma for the first time. What were your original thoughts when you thought when you saw this schedule come out? Um, you know, last week on a Wednesday night. Yeah, it was one of the like when you see the home schedule, you know why Texas moved to the SEC. Like obviously the money is why Texas moved to the SEC. But the reason that money is there is because you're going to have home games against Georgia and Florida, you know, instead of Kansas State and Texas Tech. And that's no offense to those schools, right? But like it's just different. And so Kentucky, right? Big game. And so you know, it was just one of those. Once you see it for the first time, you know what's coming. But once you see it for the first time, you see what that home schedule is going to be like in front of DKR. Like, okay, it's going to get to a point where, like, there's some big games coming that weren't coming in the Big 12, and it's going to be exciting for the football fans. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, uh, with Mike Stoops coming here. UTSA even is a good home game uh, with with what's going on down there in San Antonio. Colorado State's not a terrible week week one game. Uh, the added game, because remember they're playing eight games in conference, the long ones had to add a 12th game. It's Louisiana Monroe. That's been announced. That'll be uh, the easiest game of the year, but a great home schedule. You know, my least favorite band or country band of all time is Florida Georgia Line. You get Florida and Georgia. They're not even, they're, they're awful. If you love their music, we'll move on from that topic. <laughs> but uh, they both in, in time, again, we don't know the dates, but you get Florida, Georgia, and Kentucky. That's just fun. And then the here's the things that this stood out to me. There are seven home games Yes, in year one, which, okay, seven home games, big time. Only four true road games because you played Oklahoma in Dallas uh, in October. The Michigan game will be, a, just like Alabama this year, it'll be a monster. Uh, and those, So if you're a Longhorn fan who'd like to make a road trip, you're going to have to choose between Michigan uh, A&M is going to be the road game at College Station. We haven't seen a date on that yet. Arkansas is a fun road trip. And then Vanderbilt will be an underrated road trip mm-hmm. because I just got back from Nashville this past weekend. It's a blast. Yeah. And Vanderbilt is just north of downtown. I mean, you mean from Broadway, lower Broadway, uh, where the party, party goes on and Florida Georgia Line has a bar and all that stuff. Uh, it's a party, and Vanderbilt is right to the north of it in the hospital district. It's a beautiful campus. Uh, that's a cool place. And I would say this. Do a buddy trip to the Michigan game. Take your wife or girlfriend to the Vanderbilt game. She'll have a blast. Put her up in the uh, you know the Thompson Hotel down there in the Gulch, or put her up at the uh, uh, one of those nice, cool boutique hotels. They've got a what do they call those? The Graduate Hotels, and the the rooftop is all Dolly Parton pink themed. Right. It's really cool. Put her up there. You'll have a great time. But cool road trips too. In addition to the badass home schedule. And you know maybe also just go with your buddies because it's the bachelorette bachelorette party well, capital single, of the on. world. You know, so uh, you can go to the Pantheon. You don't have to go all the way to Athens, right? It's like the Athens of the South or whatever yeah. they call it, Nashville. Um, and so yeah, that is an underrated trip. You'll be able to get tickets. Tickets will be available cheaper uh, than Arkansas or A and M or Oklahoma and Dallas. And so yeah, once you just you know you know you don't know the weeks and the schedule and how it's going to lay out, but you start to see that schedule and you start to see how it shapes up for road trips and for home games. And you start to realize why it was such a good move for for Texas oh. to join the party and get and to Jay the Hartzell, the president, is uh, it's it's a, it's a, he's a business guy, right? He was McCombs full you know, head of the McCombs School. The revenues through the roof. Just think about those road games: Michigan, Oklahoma, and Dallas, A and M, Arkansas. I mean, come on, that's old school. It's yeah. it's it's historic. Revisiting the A and M game, getting back to playing Arkansas. I know it didn't go well a couple of years There's ago. Some helmet favorite. on helmet games, right there. Yeah, Oklahoma. I mean, it's your childhood. If you're older, younger, even you'll you'll learn you'll learn the history of those games. And the Vanderbilt game is just a fun road trip. Not a bad one in there. I mean, Nashville's a lot more fun than Ames, Iowa. I can promise you that. Or no doubt. Manhattan, Kansas, or Easier Lubbock, to get Texas. To. And uh, yeah, it's a straight flight from from Austin Bergstrom to uh, or anywhere in Texas, really into Nashville. You'll have a blast. So love that schedule. Uh, it's going to be fun. We'll have more to talk about it. That's why we did the first quarter on this year's schedule. But man, already building momentum into 2024. Pretty nice job by the SEC to roll that out. But again, last thought on that. As far as a first schedule in the SEC, it's fun and is more manageable than you would have imagined to draw. Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Mississippi State, um, you know, in addition to your traditional rivals, add Louisiana Monroe, seven home games, just four true road. You know, again, they're all going to be tough when you're playing the SEC. That's what you're signing up for. But manageable, I think, would be a good word for it. 
Uh, all right, the uh, the second quarter brought to you by uh, a great thing. This is, you know, if you take prescription drugs for you and your family, this is something you have to get to know about. It's Access Discount Healthcare, created by pharmacists because they get frustrated with the high tabs as well. They understand how this can work. And uh, it's a prescription drug platform, essentially like a Netflix model. You simply play a small monthly fee and you access that platform for all of your prescriptions and they're free. You pay the monthly fee. If it's a single person, it's $21.99. Uh, if you got a couple, it's $26.99. And for a family of three or more that all live in the same household, it's $31.99. They're 32 bucks every month for all of your prescriptions. They'll be mailed directly to you or picked up at over 64,000 pharmacies like Walgreens, CVS, and others. Uh, you can go to their website and our landing page and see the drugs that are included before you sign up. Uh, you and your family members are paying more than $21 for yourself, more than $31 for you and your family. This is your answer. They already have over 1.5 million Americans using this platform. They've already collectively saved over $100 million for people. And the retention rate, once people get signed up, they don't drop. It's 98% once they're on this platform. Uh, we're helping, helping to spread the word. Go to your YourFreeRxDrugs.com. That's the website. Your, no apostrophe, YourFreeRxDrugs.com. This is not insurance. It's not a discount card. You can sign up and learn more. They have every answer to questions you have to what I'm telling you right now at YourFreeRxDrugs.com. They have an answer and a fact page. I promise you, check it out if you want to save yourself a ton of money. Think about what you're spending monthly on average on prescription drugs for you and or your family. YourFreeRxDrugs.com. Dot com. All right, time for halftime, and our halftime segments will always this season be brought to you by One Source Gas, your one-stop shop in Central Texas for all gas products. Uh, and, you know, we said, Mike, during the season, we're going to bring on a lifetime Longhorn to learn more about where they're at, what they're up to these days. And it was really cool. Uh, I was glad you got to get off to the mountains of Tennessee and enjoy some cool weather and hiking. But we got to bring my, Laquan Cosby in here, a longtime friend of mine, somebody you covered and followed at Texas. And mm -hmm. now he's working as a, you know, he sells insurance, is a real job. But as we learned, he's a special assistant to Jay Hartzell in the president's office. And it's really tied in with the Longhorns. And I thought this was interesting. We're talking about NIL. And uh, in our halftime segment, there's a new bill just signed by the governor. I think it's State Bill 2804. And it loosens restrictions on NILs and certainly uh, they want the funds, uh, the collectives in the state of Texas only, which has raised the feathers of everybody else. And it's going to make it easier. You're going to be able to raise money you know, with the Texas One Fund and others for all the schools in the state of Texas that play Division One football, raise money, get, get uh, bonuses and you know, points and better parking and better tickets, much like you've done for the Longhorn Foundation. But this was interesting with Quan talking about NIL. And remember, Quan played four years of minor league baseball, then came back to Texas in 05, won a national championship, but came back with a with a mature head on his shoulders. And uh, listen to Quan talking about how he what he likes about NIL. And let, what we talked about that, you know, yes, there's going to be issues. We've got to iron out a lot, um, make it a little more equitable. But I want your reaction to Quan's thoughts on NIL and how it connects these student athletes, not just football, but all student athletes, with the uh, the infrastructure at the University of Texas. Texas wasn't that. What Texas sold, and being older, I was like, some places given signing bonuses. For me, Texas was an annuity, and they made a promise it was going to mature through the years, and then you get to know that network, and that's essentially how it happened. So talking to Jordan Whitten about it, talking to a lot of the current players about that perspective, even with the NIL piece of it. I was like, dude, y'all don't even have rules. You can go hang out with anybody. <laughs> they can buy you meals. You can do anything you want. So taking a little bit more advantage of it, and kudos to Texas because they still manage it de uh, you know, a decent amount. The fans are getting involved because with that new bill, the good old Aggies, they would love to get buy them another team. Twelfth man, the plus 12th found man. Eight. Yeah, and then of course we have we have a big little pot to, to to work with as well with with the foundation we created. So that's wild, wild west. Because of that bill, the feds, I don't think they'll we'll get through this year without new legislation passing on their end. Had that conversation um, at the tower today. So that little things like that that we we talk about and we we pay attention to at the tower. But uh, translate to the sports slash, you know, campus experience. And the coolest thing, um, as amazing as Admiral McRaven was, he said it best. Sports is the front door of that place. Yeah. And so my role with UT, certainly more academic. We're on Dean searches. We're on all this stuff. But it filters into certainly sports and going to see the national championship track the other day and all those things. So, yeah, man, it's. 
I'm glad that door's open. We know again it's it needs some even more molding and cleaning up. But some WD forty. Oh goodness, <laughs> like squeak. a lot of a few cans. <laughs> yeah, and some oil. But um, uh, I'm I'm glad I'm glad it's where it is, and I like to see it fixed for the most part or cleaned up. But it, it's really cool the way I know UT is taking advantage of those relationships. Yeah. All right. There's Quan Cosby last week, and I just thought that was an annuity, not a payment. Like, whether you're paying players under the table, Quan coming from a business background, playing minor league baseball, he talked about how he had to buy his way out of his Angels contract and made that decision. Uh, that's insightful. And then went on to say, Mike, that he, he organized a deal with Mac Brown, and Mac would set him up with a, with a quarterly lunch with one of the heavy hitters at UT while he was playing, Quan would pay for his own lunch, but he'd get to meet them and and just learn. And now we're seeing that with NIL, that, that they're getting to correspond with these big-time uh, donors and boosters on, on a legal way. But it's just whether they're going to play football or not or run track and field, they're going to meet these people and have lifelong connections. Yeah, I mean, I think for most of college football history, it was a disadvantage to be in a major city. If you look at just like the major teams in college football you know, it's Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, you know, uh, t- USC and Miami are outliers, but those are private schools, right? Like Texas is one of the major in major cities uh, in college football. And now it's an advantage because Oracle's here, because Dell is here, because of all these companies are here um, that you can get in front of people that aren't going to just pay you money right now to play as a sophomore, uh, but that may kind of pay for your life as a job, you know, after football and, and beyond. And so uh, I think Texas has that advantage. They can put business leaders and Fortune 500 CEOs, uh, not just in their alumni base, but at their same front door, right? And for most of these guys, the NFL is the dream, but it's not always a reality. And even if it is, it's a short one. And uh, to have something to fall back on, like the leaders in Austin around uh, that campus and around this city is, is huge, and it's only growing. Well, it's amazing. Quan has talked about guys, the guys who have come back, his former teammates that have started businesses, the Brian Arakpos, the Michael Griffins, and those guys, they don't even know how to reach out to, who to reach out to. They call Quan, and Quan connects them with, oh, you need to talk to this guy, you need to talk to this guy, or this person, this lady. And, you know, that's developing now for these younger players. I know... You know, again, Quan's right on. We got to iron out a lot of issues because it is a wild, wild west. There aren't a lot of rules, but big picture, I think you know, if only three percent of college athletes go on to play professional football, well, the ninety-seven percent while they're on campus can meet people that can impact their lives greatly, and they weren't allowed to before. There was a wall built between student athletes and boosters because of the rules, uh, and that no one wanted to get in trouble. People would try to skirt the rules, but you never met those people. They were there if they were given money under the table to pay for a player. They just wanted to play good. They didn't weren't investing in that player's future. This allows for some of that. And when we say that, you know, three percent make it to the NFL, you know, I think the thing we don't talk about is of that three percent, only one percent doesn't have to work again. Yeah. You know, a lot of those guys, even you know, I got an uncle who played eight years in the NFL. He's got a job. You know, <laughs> like and so even with the pension, you know, and so. Um, to have the network at the University of Texas and in the city of Austin is something that the University of Texas should leverage and, from what I know, is leveraging very well. Oh, sure. And they give you those stats and they tell you, meet these people. And they can give the example of uh, Tucker Dorsey last year, James Madison transfer from the Division II level. Uh, Diamante Tucker Dorsey came here for one year, was not kind of a nondescript player, started some games. But while he was here, met Gary Keller from Keller Williams Realty. He's now a mentor to him. He's on his way to being a, a high-level realtor. Uh, which wouldn't have happened without NIL, without that opportunity. And Keller just you know, kind of took him under his wing. I don't know, wasn't, it was just, but that's, those are cool stories. Those mm-hmm. are things where a guy who, when football's over, what's he going to do? That's what college is for. Yeah, that's what college was, was for me. Yep. That's it's what 100%. you do it for. And before there was a wall between it, I uh, love that it's happening. Needs fixed and needs needs rules, but uh, works. There's our halftime segment brought to you by One Source Gas of Austin. They are your t- Texas compressed, compressed gas leader. Uh, One Source Gas provides compressed gases such as CO2, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, propane, many more to various industries in the great state. Uh, One Source Gas is your CO2 provider, the lead one uh, for the service industry and, of course, the hospitality uh, industry, serving medical uh, as well. Uh, it's one source gas run by my buddy Richard Strever, locally owned and operated for over 12 years. They understand that exceptional customer service is the key when your success is in line. It's your business, right? You can't lose your CO2. If you've got bars and taps and everything going there, if you're a restaurant owner, you need to have it, your dental office, your veterinary clinic, you'd have compressed gas needs and you're looking for a new CO2 compressed gas provider. Can't recommend them enough. One 
OneSourceGasATX.com, OneSourceGasATX.com, or call Richard, 214-8484. That's 512-214-8484. One of their staff members will be glad to help you with their, your compressed gas needs. Good dude, promise you. Awesome folks, uh, and do a heck of a job all through Austin, South Austin, into San Antonio, doing an awesome job. One source gas, ATX.com. All right, third quarter time. Let's uh, get this thing rolling. We've got uh, uh, always in the third quarter, Mike, we dive into our uh, our conversations. It's flavored and seasoned and spiced up by On Point Spice Company, and they bring us our On Point Spice Company hot takes from our digital producer, Nolan Hogan, who uh, gets things fired up and gets us good questions so we can debate it. Hot topics around college football and Longhorn Nation. What do you got Quentin, there, Nolan? Uh, so I did kind of like y'all's first quarter segment. We had I have my top ten toughest games for this twenty twenty three season, but my I feel like mine is more based on scariness rather than toughness. Because I, I I have Alabama at one. Obviously, that speaks for itself. In Tuscaloosa, Bama's ready to make a statement after the one point win last season. Got OU at two. Natural rival. I think it. I think this season's gonna be a little different. They didn't have a quarterback last year. Uh, forty-eight to zero. They're looking to make another statement. Forty-nine. Don't forty-nine. Don't, don't sorry, point sorry, 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 sorry. Come after us. <laughs> They're looking for fifty-two. We missed it. We missed a field goal. Yeah. So we're looking for fifty-two. But uh, I think that with the this time with the Sooners having a QB, I think it'd be a different game. They're going to be ready to play. It won't be. I don't think it'll be a boat race like it was last season. Uh, number three, I have TCU. They didn't lose a game in the Big Twelve last season. We got Sonny Dykes as head coach. I think. You're saying don't sleep on the Horn Frogs. Do not sleep on the Horn Frogs. They just won the Big 12 last season. They're going to be back this year. I think the loss of Max Duggan is big, but I think they can they can figure it out with the defense they have. Hold on. They didn't win the Big 12 last year. They lost by an inch in the Big 12 title game to K-State. Well, no, no, but... they, they won the regular season Big 12. 12 <laughs> in the regular yes, season, they won the, the Big 12 before game. the That is correct. Game. But you're right. I, mean, I just was, because, again, we'll get emails right. and whatnot. Uh, but they lost by an inch because they didn't let Max yes. Duggan run the quarterback sneak, Mike Craven. What are we doing? Yeah. No. That Clay can't be stopped. Ask Jalen Hurts with the Eagles. You can't stop that play. Put him in the end zone. So you have a TCU three. I like that. TCU three. I have Tech at four. Tech up. Tech up there oh, at that's four. A, that's tech is the dark horse. Tech. See, Tech. The Tech love is starting to scare me. As like a Joey McGuire fan club person, right? <laughs> like the Tech love is starting to scare me. It's because like to be a dark horse, there needs to be like a little bit of of uh, of hesitancy. It's starting to feel like Tech is the third favorite in the Big 12, uh, and that that scares me a little bit because I'm not quite sure they're ready for that on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Uh, he thinks they're ready, and you know he's oh, all yeah. confident, and the Red yeah. Raiders are ready to get their guns yeah. up and be yeah. all in on that deal. So you got T- Texas Tech there. What else scares you in this, this Longhorn 2023 season? Uh, I got Baylor at five. The only reason I say that is they, they're coming off the Wyoming game. They're going into Waco, last, last game in Waco. Don't let me die in Waco. I think that game is just going to be a little tougher than we were expecting, and I think that it's it's just Waco. You never know with Baylor; they're always good. They can, like Dave Aranda has the defense; they can they can figure out how to stop our stop some weapons. So if 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 that game is closer than we're expecting, it's going to be scary. Uh, six, I have Kansas State. That game, they lost a little. They lost Deuce Vaughn. They have still weapons with uh, with Will Howard, but where are those going to be placed? Who's going to replace that weapon in Deuce Vaughn on the Carry who's going to take those carries for Deuce Vaughn? Um, I put Houston higher. Y'all had Houston low eight nine range. I had Houston at seven. Uh, another easy ga- easy game to overlook after the Red River shootout. Oh, e- despite the bye week, I still think that game is easy to overlook. Going into Houston, uh, home green home green knows how to get it together. I think that game is a little. They that team will be already seen UTSA. TCU and Texas Tech prior to playing us. Okay. So I think they're going to have a little look at the, what the Big 12 is offering and they're going to be ready to play us. Uh, and again, and then I have Wyoming at 8. That game after the Bama if after the Bama game, despite no, no matter how that game goes, I think that game is easy to kind of take as a cupcake and Texas doesn't take cupcakes lightly. They play cupcakes as they should. Play against. They kind of play to their level. They've had, in recent. It's been a Sark issue. In right. recent years, they have had issue of playing to their level and not just blowing out teams they should blow out. So I think that game is a little scarier than what people should expect. I think that um, that if we don't come in there with the right mentality, that game could easily be a two score game, one score game that we're not. Ooh, Wyoming. For. Okay. Hey. Uh, you got, and we've I never hope played, you're wrong. We've, we've, <laughs> 
We have never we haven't played Wyoming since 2012. And they killed them at Wyoming. This is true. <laughs> okay, but okay, that's a high for you. What do you have nine? Nine is Kansas. I have okay. Kansas at nine. Well, there's Jalen Daniels. That's a. Uh, I think just after like improving life. team and Lance Leipold is a good coach, Mike. I know you don't work, you don't cover Kansas at Dave Campbell's Texas football, but man, you know, kind of like Chris Kleiman, there's just a. Yeah, there's if you a can win, you can resume. win. I mean, it's why Jeff Trailer, Joey McGuire, like if you like, there's something to being a head coach, and if you can win at any, I mean, if you can win, you can win at any level. Yeah, mm-hmm. get it right, get the right recipe, learn how to you know coach it up, and Leipold, Jeff Trailer's a great example. High school into college now, and uh, Kevin, uh, uh, Chris Klein. I mean, he yeah. was a national champion over and over again. Uh, winners are winners. Uh, so what do you have at ten? Ten, I have BYU. Okay, BYU. BYU. Historically, Texas is one and two against BYU. And, yeah, and the boy on a bicycle, Taysom Hill days, still mm. are scary. Speaking of because, PTSD, yeah. yes, forty-one to seven loss last <sighs> time again in twenty fourteen. Oh, uh, Ken, like you said, Ken, Keaton Slovis. So. Okay, I, I like this. There you go. There's some spicy hot takes from Nolan Hogan, our digital producer. You just, you just lining it up for scariness. I will certainly take your thoughts. You can always comment uh, on our Twitter page there at Eyes on Texas on Twitter as we load those up. You can always find us there as well. It's the Eyes on Texas multicast into our fourth quarter now. I should tell you that uh, uh, the hot takes right there are brought to you by our great friends at On Point Spice Company. I promise you as we get into the summer grilling season and smoking season, my buddies James Joseph and Adrian Ruiz, they produce top quality spice blends are an absolute must in every home and every barbecue pit. Uh, it is uh, time to, to rock these things out. Listen, try them out. Go to the website, onpointspices.com. It's onpointspices.com. They have two rubs or two products that you're going to want to go to. They're starting small, uh, but they have their top quality spice blends. Uh, one of them is their top shelf steak and more. It's the last steak seasoning you will ever need. It's phenomenal on fillets, ribeyes, sirloins, T-bones, whatever cut of meat you're going to go to. Also fantastic on veggies. It's just an amazing seasoning. As I say, it'll replace everything in your pantry there. That you got going. It's their top shelf steak and more. Try it, I promise you. Uh, also, the AR Barbecue Pitmaster Rub for you pitmasters and smokers uh, this summer into football season in the fall. Uh, it is a grand champion rub, has 20 plus years in the making. Now you can add it to your spice rack and pit brisket, chicken, ribs, pork shoulder, whatever meat you're smoking. Uh, Adrian Ruiz has designed this. It's amazing. It's also on the uh, discovered really good on the rim of your favorite Bloody Mary the day after. Try those out. It is wonderful. The AR Barbecue Pit Master Rub. Get you some today. OnPointSpices.com. That's OnPointSpices.com. Time for our final quarter. It's our Big Four Conversations in Longhorn Nation right now, Mike, uh, because it's a pretty quiet time. But they had a big recruiting weekend. Uh, that's one of our Big Four Conversations. Big recruiting weekend this past weekend. Uh, rolling out the red carpet. More than 20 uh, prospects. 2024 and 2025. We'll have another one this weekend, which we'll tell you about that's coming up big. This weekend being, uh, you know, coming out of Juneteenth and into the fi- this this coming weekend. But this weekend, they got two commitments out of the 20 that were here and a kid named Freddie DuBose from uh, Smithson Valley down in the uh, San Antonio area. Speedster on the track and field side, Mike, but uh, got hurt. Uh, you missed most of his junior season with an injury, but came back in time for the track and field side. Uh, the word on him, freak athlete, has a lot of the uncoachables, but still needs some of the coachables. He's a raw player, but one of these freaky, super fast, 6'2", lean guy that can go type of wide receiver. Yeah, he'll remind a lot of people of the same build that that seems to be Sark's M.O., right? Like Xavier Worthy, Jonte Cook, even Devontae Smith back at Alabama, that, that long, wiry wide receiver with a lot of quick twitch. Uh, qualified for the 6A triple jump and long jump, you know, as a sophomore, uh, tore his ACL the first game uh, of his junior season, so didn't get a lot of football tape of him uh, last year, obviously. But you know, you go with athleticism on the outside. You know, they want big guys in the in the middle and and feet speed on the outside. He absolutely checks that box. They're just going to load that room with as many playmakers as they can possibly make, and then the cream rises to the top once you get on campus. Yeah, and and coach him up. Chris Jackson, the new wide receivers coach, has come in from the NFL. This is his first commitment, first of what they hope are many. But you're right, there is a type. He wants big humans up front, speed on the outside. You're not playing at Texas moving forward at the, as a receiver if you don't run 4-4 or lower. Mm-hmm. you got to be a freak. And, uh, you know, the one thing I was told by someone who's seen this kid, freak athlete, the uncoachables are ridiculous, and he's coached. He just hadn't, he didn't play a junior year of football. He needs a senior season. He's going to need reps, but he can't. He's got a lot you can't coach. He's taller than you think. 
pretty good wingspan. You talked about the triple jump and track and field, just a freaky athlete, uh, kind of a rock lump of clay you got to work with, uh, which you know, with a senior year to play, you're excited about that he's committed to the Longhorns. Also, this one is really intriguing to me. Four-star cornerback Santana Wilson out of Scottsdale, Arizona. He is the son of former Arizona Cardinals and NFL All-Pro safety Adrian Wilson. And this is becoming a trend for Sark, the sons of NFL players. As Arch Manning is an example. Uh, I just think there's some – that means a lot to the to the parents of other kids. They're like, oh, Arch Manning's parents like Sark and the program. They haven't won a lot, but, man, that means something. Adrian Wilson, just a stud of a player, and this kid looks like the real deal. A lot of people thought he'd stay home but wanted to, you know, fell in love with Texas. I mean, those, the, those signs of approval from – you know, NFL players, I think, mean a lot to a staff. Yeah, I mean, if Peyton Manning and, and Arch Manning, Cooper Manning, if the Mannings are signing off on quarterbacks, and I mean, Adrian Wilson's like the player personnel guy for the Carolina Panthers. That's like right. he, He's still still in football, and so when those guys are vouching for you, uh, I would imagine that that helps you a lot with other people's parents. You know, maybe not. Maybe I don't know if the players know who an Adrian Wilson is, you know, but the other parents who, you know, hey, this guy works for the Carolina Panthers and he's sending his son here, right? Like that guy's Arch Manning. He's sending, you know, he, he's getting his grandson here, and so I think that absolutely uh, helps them. You know, with with Wilson with Santana uh, particularly, I think he may end up a safety. I don't know if he's fast enough. Uh, to to stay at cornerback, we'll have to see to see about that. Then the other part is, you know, I remember being on the beat, and you go out to Arizona, and I, I would watch Jake Smith, and you watch Bijan Robinson, and Latham Ransom, and some of those guys. Keely Ringo, it's not good. Like the the level of competition out there at Arizona, even at their highest classification level, is like two three A ball here, right? Wow. So like there is going to be a, a level of of adjustment period that needs to happen. Even though he's at one of the bigger uh, uh, Arizona schools, it's it's a different level of competition. So you'll just never know how they're going to adjust to that. Yeah. You like the bloodlines? You like the uh, vote of, vote of confidence from a, a a high level executive in the NFL like that? Uh, and I think you're right about parents. I mean, just you know, talking to Adrian Wilson and his family. What do you like? about it what do you we have questions here what do you think uh, the arch manning stamp stamp of approval that's kind of a trickle down to that and another big weekend coming up i believe uh the duncanville defensive end colin simmons the pass rusher will be here this weekend that's early but there's a sense around texas mike that they like these june visits that they feel like they can get a lot of time with the parents they can roll out the red carpet we just heard from Quan Cosby sell everything that is Texas, the total yeah. package, while the parents are on campus. There's no game to worry about that's, like that's a fall. The main, that's the main thing. And they really like these June commitments. Yeah. A, lot, a, lot a lot of Texas fans are like, why is he coming in so early? Uh, I think that's why. They really like time. Yeah. You you get to have some treatment with those guys because if you if you have a game going on, you got to go win a football game, you know. And so you're split. There's so many things going on. Sark's got media after games. The assistant coaches are doing stuff. Your own players are doing stuff. June you can bring them in and it's just them. You can roll off the red carpet, you can show them campus, you can show them Austin in a way that you couldn't during during the fall season. And a lot of these players want to commit before their football season starts. Like with sure. that early signing period in December now, you know, not as many guys are taking it into November into the, into December. December. And so it's not just a Texas thing. Most of these guys are taking their officials in the summer and making the decision by September. I'd also say the, of the top four stories, those are our first two around the Longhorns, two commitments, two big recruiting weekends. And Colin Simmons, I mean, gosh, I mean, he's maybe the best high school player in the state, certainly on defense. Yeah, certainly on defense. Micah Hudson, wide receiver, at Lake Belton's off, also in that conversation uh, offensively. But yeah, Colin Simmons, a- absolutely a stud off the edge, dominated in that North Shore State Championship game. And as we know, North Shore has got Division One athletes all over the place that's a real deal stud dude what's happening interesting on the recruiting cycle right now is you know a lot of these guys are going out of state you know it feels like a&m and texas aren't needing as big a classes as they've needed in the last couple of years because they've signed such good classes uh that a lot of these guys are starting to go out of state rather than a texas tech a tcu and i wonder if it's because of the transfer portal because you can always come back yeah uh, and, and we'll start to see what these trends are in the new recruiting world with nil it's interesting and uh, obviously those schools are going to be playing in the new look big 12 Mm -hmm. Uh, with Texas and Oklahoma leaving. Uh, So real good stuff. Real quick note on uh, Longhorn baseball. We do try to keep up with other sports, but Longhorn's uh, shortstop Mitchell Daly has entered the transfer portal. That raised some eyebrows. Probably shouldn't be a huge surprise. Mitchell did not play great as a junior. Uh, He was a freshman All-American out of uh, of the state of Alabama. Uh, But sophomore and junior years weren't as good. He actually lost his starting job this year at Texas, middle of the season, if you weren't paying attention. Uh, the, The youngster Flores 
Uh, Jalen Flores took his spot at shortstop. He probably wouldn't have come back at all without an injury, but he did have a big postseason, played well. Uh, so Longhorn fans, keep an eye on that. He's into the portal. Longhorns did add uh, former Baylor right-handed pitcher Will Rigney, who I think is a big-time arm. Uh, he played with for Steve Rodriguez there at Baylor. He's coming in in the portal. He's a Waco area product. Uh, 42 strikeouts and 32 innings in 2023. Big, tall right-hander. Uh, I like that for Texas. We'll keep you posted on Longhorn baseball. Kind of like Longhorn basketball. I mean, the portal is flying. People are coming from everywhere. I have heard that the Longhorns are still trying to add two more players for this year's roster through the transfer portal. Uh, they've got nine right now. Uh, looking for a point guard, uh, and a, a veteran point guard or a bigger guard, on the, especially on the defensive end. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. Usually do it in our Final Four, our four, five, fourth quarter the big story surrounding Longhorn sports and Longhorn athletics and what's going on there. Longhorns did finish second, Mike, runner-up in the Director's Cup, if anybody cares, for the best athletic department. Stanford has <laughs> reclaimed it after 25 years. Longhorns win back-to-back. Stanford, by beating Texas in that heartbreaking Super Regional, uh, clinched it, and they will be your Director's Cup champions. That feels like one of those things that the fans only care about when they win. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's like not that big of a deal well, when you It was second. a lot of success for Texas yeah. in 2022-23. Two national championships, including volleyball. Uh, Twelve Big 12 championships. No other program won more than six. Uh, so there was a lot of success on the 40 acres, but not as much as Stanford. And let's also remember Stanford plays every sport. Yeah, I mean, they got women's equestrian. They do women's kayaking. It's crazy. They got like 36 Division One sports they compete in. Uh, triple what Texas puts on the field. Uh, so they do have a bit of an advantage there. All right, that final quarter and those final four brought to you and delivered by the Good Times and Incredible Scratch Comfort Food at Hayes City Store and Ice House. Absolute destination location. Our favorite place is in Driftwood, Texas. Uh, it is tremendous, open for business and ready to rock and roll. They're, they're eight years in now. You serve your family. They're beautiful and open every day. Seating on their beautiful patio or outdoor sports bar inside as well quickly becoming famous statewide for their scratch-made Texas comfort food that include uh, wood-fried pizzas, house-ground burgers, over 53 beers on tap out there in that ice house. They're right there in Driftwood between Wimberley, Kyle, Buda, uh, Dripping Springs, great location. You've been there yet, Mike? Have you made it out to Hayes City Store? Yeah, nice met my uncle out there. He lives in Wimberley. It's kind of halfway or close to halfway between. It's really good. Bacon jam. Break bacon jam burger is the best, man. Mouthwatering, making me get hungry right now. Right there in Driftwood. Find the, their entire menu because you'll want to know what you're going to pick before you get out there. Hayes City Store, Texas, excuse me, TX.com. Hayes City Store, TX.com online. Also have a great Facebook page. And that's going to put the wraps on another edition of the Eyes on Texas Multicast. Mike, any parting thoughts, final thoughts as you're back from the Smoky Mountains to the searing inferno that is Central Texas? No, I uh, get to take a break and go to Houston where it's two degrees cooler, but a uh, thousand more degrees of humidity so uh <laughs> gonna enjoy that gonna go uh have some interviews with the cougars so we can talk more houston uh, houston next, when you come week. back next monday we'll have that as part of our conversation and try, down... trying to get a one-on-one with jt daniels while i'm there that's to be determined if you get that we'll play it here on the eyes on texas multicast because longhorns will play the cougars october the 21st down in houston uh looking forward to that for sure also looking forward to the uh, dave campbell's texas football magazine rolling out which is coming your way uh, for sure. What do we? You said some people already have their copy. Yeah, if you subscribe, you get it early. So you go to TexasFootball.com, you subscribe, you you save on shipping and handling, you get the recruiting and the basketball magazine as well, plus all the digital content that we put out. So it's a really good deal. And uh, you get the magazine early. And you I'll get be, to complain to me before everybody else gets to complain. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I'll be on tomorrow morning and every morning at hornfm.com, the Longhorn flagship station, along with Bucky Godbolt and the team. Looking forward to that. And we're counting down the days to Texas football. Big 12 Media Days coming pretty quick. Eyes on Texas Multicast, available weekly on Dave Campbell's uh, and the Horned Austin YouTube pages, available for download through iTunes and Spotify so you can watch it. And certainly, thank you very much to our title sponsor, presenting sponsor, uh, Ed Grande Equipment, the locally owned independent equipment company serving Texas and the world's equipment needs since 2004 online at grandeequipment.com. That's a wrap. Hook them.